going on guys, Trey Lowell here. In the video you just watched without sound design, I gotta be honest with you, would just not be the same. So in today's video, we're gonna hop in Final Cut 10 and go over some quick tips and tricks that I've learned over the years to add some sound design to your videos to really make them pop and give your audience a better experience. Coming up next. Okay, so now that we're in Final Cut 10, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is kinda start from the very beginning of the project. And by doing that, we're basically gonna start from scratch. So we're gonna remove all of our current sound design, which is going to be background music, sound effects, etc. And I'm just gonna show you guys what the project would look like without sound design. And while the footage does look good, the one thing that this is not making you feel is like the experience of being there. So this is where the sound design when added is really going to kind of bring all these shots and this scenery to life. Now currently, I do like how it visually looks and I like the cuts, but like I said, without the music, it's really just not tying it all together for the visual experience that I'm trying to get across to the audience. So we're going to hop back into our first step. And typically when I'm doing these videos, I like to actually pick my music first uh, because I actually like to edit to music. So a lot of times I will just take a glimpse at my footage, maybe put one or two clips in the timeline, take a look at it so that I can get a feel for what I have. And then I proceed to go out and search for music. So we went from absolutely no sound design to now just having a background audio track. Still no sound effects. So this is the very basics. And this gives me my template of how I'm going to cut and transition throughout the video. So let's go ahead and get a preview of now footage with the background audio track on top. And while I'm not cutting every beat, I am trying to cut to the music. And this is gonna help for impact to the audience. Okay, so now that we have our music in the background, while that definitely does help with the video, the next step is going to kind of be bringing each shot to life. And the first thing that we're gonna do to kind of give the audience a vibe and bring them into the scenery is we're going to add some rain and some kind of ambient noise to kind of replicate what you would be hearing in this environment if you were actually there. So I've chosen uh, wind number seven and with a lot of these clips, I do not have the volume completely up. Actually, to be exact, this one's at negative 15 and actually will take a drop as we move further throughout the actual sequence. And then I have a surround compressor on the wind file to also make it kind of be more surround sound and pull it to the background rather than having it dominate. So now that we have those two, we'll just give a quick preview. And so that you guys can just hear that sound by itself. And then we'll add music. Okay, so at this point, it's starting to bring the scenery to life. So we've got our background audio track and then we have some wind and then quickly we'll go over a couple of layers that you guys can kind of see here in the timeline. We've got the forest sound effect turned down to negative 20 and as you guys can see as we move along it'll actually decrease in its volume as well. And then we have some rain to replicate the rain that you're actually seeing in the shots. This is going to be crucial because it's really going to make the viewer feel like they're actually there while it's raining. So let's go ahead and see what these two layers now added on top of our audio track slash background music with wind, forest day, and rain three. So once again, starting to really bring the environment to life. And then as we move just below these a little bit more, I'm going to kind of just activate several of them so that you can hear them, excuse me, with hard rain, whoosh, 
and water drip. Now the hard rain is going to be set to replicate this scene where we have a ton of rain and that is our first scene or kind of shot that our audience is gonna see. So we really wanna bring it home, make them feel like they're there. And the whoosh is going to be to replicate this pan up as we then reveal the plants in the background. And then the water drip is to replicate the water hitting the plant and did the best I could to make it actually coincide with the water droplets hitting the plant. So let's go ahead and watch that real quick. Okay, so at this point, we've got a pretty nice sequence here. And as you can kind of see, as I show you guys the timeline, I'm basically replicating a lot of the same sound effects as we move throughout the timeline. But what I have tried to do is slowly but surely uh, kind of time most of the sound effects. So if there's a water droplet hitting the plant, putting that water drip sound to hit when that water droplet hits that plant. Now this will take a lot more time, but it's going to bring your audience in and it's gonna really make them kind of get sucked in and feel that environment. And as we make our way, the one thing that we're not gonna do is replicate the exact same rain for the entire video. And the reason being is by doing that, it never takes you to the next shot or the next scene of the actual video. So what you can kind of see in my timeline is I have rain three that kind of goes for the first 15 seconds and then slowly fades out. Gives the audience a little bit of a breather during the section where there's not a lot of rain. It's more of just droplets, slow motion. Uh, there's no need to have rain pouring in the background because you're not actually seeing it. So if you're not seeing it, you probably don't need to be hearing it. And as we make our way to kind of the third and final scene of this little clip is going to be a nice transition draw mask that then fades into water kind of dripping from the roof of the home. Now, as you guys can see in the timeline, that is when the rain is going to pan back in and it's going to make the viewer kind of feel or at least symbol or signal to them that there's rain here and they need to be hearing it. So let's go ahead and watch that sequence real quick. We're gonna have rain coming in, some more forest noise, and it's going to take you from one scene to the next. And then in our very last scene, you can see rain two comes in, which is more of a heavy uh, rain noise. Plus I have the hard rain activating at the same time. And that is to replicate this shot. There's a lot of rain going on. So it's gonna be key that if your audience is seeing a lot of rain, they should probably hear it as well. And so in a nutshell, what I've realized is sound design is something that you need to go ahead and on the front end, spend the time doing it because it will just make your scenery and your video just look so much better. So hey guys, it's Trey Lowell with Lowell Productions. And as always, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like the content I keep creating on this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. And if you have any comments, questions, concerns, go ahead and drop a comment down in the comment section below. If you're interested in some other ways that I manipulate uh, sound effects and use sound design, I'd love to answer your questions.